But uh, let me put you on a pause on that. Okay. We're getting loads of messages as regards this talks, um, but quickly, let's talk some badminton. Rather play some badminton this morning on the program. I told you we'll get you ready for the second edition of the Badmi Lagos Badminton International Classic. The chairman of the Lagos State Badminton Association is Francis Obi. He will speak to us via telephone this morning. Show. Good morning, Francis, and welcome to Sports This Morning. Uh, good morning, Austin. Mm. We're getting ready for the second edition. Um, and for you guys, there's need to impress. What's going on? Well, Austin, um, this year's edition is definitely going to be that last. And um, it's, it's getting to involve with a lot of work. Mm. It's been quite challenging to put things together. We all know what uh, the situation in the country is last year. Uh, the elections, and so reaching out to corporate bodies and organizations to support the event has been quite challenging. But like I said, we have more countries coming in for this year's event than last year, which which is making it again for a second time the biggest event in the history of badminton in Africa. Mm. So t tell me, Francis, um, second edition, I'm sure you know it's due to the success of the first edition that a lot of countries are, you know, showing interest to participate this time around. What are we planning to do differently? Well, uh, I'm sure you are aware there will be a briefing tomorrow mm. uh, to formally announce this thing. And at that point, uh, briefing will be unveiling the event and then lineup of activities for this year's uh, edition. So basically, there's a lot going on, a lot of planning, and um, we, the, the world of bad meeting is looking at Nigeria, uh, and, and we know what the expectations are, so we have to try our best to meet uh, up with what the expectation of bad world is of Nigeria this year. Mm. Francis, good one that the Lagos State Government are putting together the classics. But talk to me about badminton in Nigeria. Pretty quiet. What are we doing? Um, I won't say it's been quiet. We had the, the Lagos International last year and also the Syria International in October. And uh, like this one is coming up. Uh, we have another Nigeria International up again in Africa. So those are two tournaments coming up. And then we've had a few uh, tournaments. Up. But I'm sure you're also aware well, the preparation now is towards the All African Games mm. of the uh, uh, Sporting Federation. Mm. So, uh, and as part of that, I know the Federation will be conducting an interview to ensure uh, some coaches to prepare our team and uh, also to have them fully on board, you know. So we, quite quite a few things going on in the background, but like this is the first major event that's going to happen in the CFN calendar. Okay, thank you so much, Francis, for speaking to us on the program. We'll, we'll keep in touch with you some other time to find out more updates. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So that's it, Francis Obi is the chairman of the Lagos State Badminton Association. They are preparing for the second edition of the Lagos State International Badminton Classics. And I tell you, that's a good one because we, we keep saying these athletes must play tournaments to actually get there. We'll get ready for the all Africa Games and yeah. avenue to, you know, watch out for some players. Yeah, no doubt, Austin. And um, just to round off on this um, badminton issue now, I really hope he has the same effect from um, mm. the Lagos State Table Tennis Classics. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think mm -hmm. anyone is going to deny here that the upcoming forties for table tennis in the country actually started. Oh, from the classics. Yeah, from the classics. So I'm really hoping this time around for badminton, uh, the case is the same. Hopefully, um, um, badminton, badminton players now get to play um, and mix uh, with the very best uh, from different uh, parts of the country, mm. uh, of the world as well, and you know, improve the skill set generally. And, you know, try to make um, the country proud um, at international competitions. Mm. Before we, we, we talk about the FIFA Women's World Cup, let's quickly read some messages from Twitter and on Facebook. Interesting messages uh, we're getting uh, this morning. Um, but if we could just have it on the screen. Um, this one is from Fidel. 
SCA. It says the Nigeria Football Federation should work towards earning their respect rather than forcing it. I don't think they're forcing it. I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't think they're forcing it in what way? They're just trying to ensure that there's discipline yes. and that people know that they are answerable to, you know, you know, exactly, you know, the authority. Exactly, Yeah. Adele Ketemi Tokwe um, wrote to us via Twitter. He says, I don't know what the NFF are dragging. We don't know, too. We want to find out. Let the players be fine and let's move on. No committee, no media invitation. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's the problem. It's dragging too long. It's playing out in the media mm. uh, for far too long. Mm. Come up with a final verdict. It's going to be a fine, whatever sanction it is. And let's move on. Let's mm. focus on the, on the, on the assignment. I agree with yeah. Adele on every issue but there should be media invitation we need to find out what's going on we need to hear from them Olumide Adebambo on Twitter says I honestly don't think that coach Stephen Keshi is interested in the job of coaching the Super Eagles he's not really concerned about the team um, I totally disagree with that yeah, well, um, but yeah, that's, his opinion. that's his opinion you're yeah. allowed to you're entitled to your opinion maybe he's expecting Keshi to come out say one or two things about all that is happening but at this point I think some people need to just keep quiet so we don't, you know, you know, worsen the situation. Let's quickly go to Facebook now. Nuru Abdullahi Kabara, we got your message. He says, the NFL should not take serious action on Coach Stephen Keshi and the players, but they should be warned seriously. I think, I think that just does it. That's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Give but, me a yellow card. But you're not try the, it again. <laughs> you're getting a red. But you're not the NFL, though. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so we're just waiting. Let him mm. come out with it. End this whole thing and let's move on. Life continues after all. These things happen. Uh, in other places as well, to, to deal with it and move on. That's what the NFL needs to do mm. um, straight away. I think I agree with you, Nora. But the message of this morning, pretty long one. We'll just, I'm just going to read it and then we'll move on to the FIFA Women's World Cup. Ola Idix on Facebook says, You guys are doing a great job. Thank you so much, Ola. I want to hear to be disciplined accordingly for trying to belittle the security arrangement that was put in place by the Kaduna State Government. Also, I think the fine given to Ogenyo Nazi is justified, even though he has apologized. This will serve as a deterrent to others who commit unnecessary foul during games. He says, I'm sending this message from California, all the way from the United States of America. Yeah, um, also he's spot on on a couple of um, mm. points there. The Onazi red card, totally unacceptable. He can't do that again. Mm. It's not a drama at all. I think he should just pay his fine and move on as well, too. What else? Yeah. Because of the manner in which he got the red card, mm. you know, off the ball yeah, incident. Boy, yeah. I mean, exactly. the team just won a penalty. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, emotions, yeah, it's a rush yeah. of blood to the brain, and you just want to show that you can carry the team. Of course, Onazi has learned his lesson, not just Onazi, for other players too. Yes. It's need for a character yeah, to definitely. be in place when you're playing yeah. a crucial game. So, totally agree. Thank you so much for sending us messages. Keep them coming on Twitter. It's channels on Ascore Sports and on Facebook with channels hyphen sports. Quickly, let's talk about the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup in Canada. Eight teams remaining. And a uh, surprise package. Australia, they're doing big things, Tayo, and they still power. Remember, they're from Group D. Yes, uh, and I remember then um, a lot of Nigerians actually thought it was going to be Australia. They were the team <laughs> that the Super Bowl clubs are going to get three points. Oh, from. my days, Australia. <laughs> but look at them now, mm -hmm. they're still moving on. And um, they're in the quarterfinals while Nigeria is back home. But they'll be playing Japan in the quarterfinals. That looks like a very uh, tough uh, fixture for them. Mm. But then they have a very good striker in uh, KR Simon. Yeah, three goals already in the competition, and if they give her any chance, then she's going to get goals. So um, that one, I, I really don't know where it's going to go. It's too tight to call. Yeah. But the Germany, France, uh, that's another all-European um, quarterfinal matchup there. It could go either ways. Mm. And China, USA, mm. that has to be the tie of the cracker. round. Cracker. Yeah. That's a cracker right F there. Former world champions going head to head, and um, the, the Americans, They are me, beginning to pick up their form. They might just start China. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, not, they have not been so admirable. They, they as haven't. Others. Yeah, that's my that's the point I was trying mm. to make. So far, this competition they've just been, you know, they're just moving on and, and grinding out results. And we'll see how it pans out between them and those two sides later on. And England versus Canada. The English um, ladies have been impressive, and mm -hmm, for me, mm -hmm. no one give them a chance. Yeah. But they're in the quarterfinals, and same goes for Canada as well. So they're the hosts. And they've been back, the, 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 the partisan uh, crowd behind them has really driven them mm -hmm. um, this far. We'll see if he has any impact um, against uh, England. So that's it, updates coming from the FIFA Women's World Cup in Canada. Let's go on this quick break now. When we come back, the biggest, fiercest 
cricket rivalry in the world. The Ashes Test, we're counting down to it. Um, it's England taking on Australia. The first test will be on July the 8th. Australia, they've landed in London. Uh, just to let you know that Australia, they've won that, the Ashes Series 32 times, England 31. So you know this year's edition will be very, very competitive because England will try to tie it. Let's listen to uh, what players are saying about that and we'll come back. So much to talk about. Don't go anywhere. Unfortunately for all the players that stand in this room, none of us has won a Ashes series. So our goal is, to state the obvious, to go home from this series as winners. David Andrew Warner. Now, David's old nickname was The Bull. It's now The Butterfly. <laughs> Please, nobody take offence if David doesn't respond to your questions tonight. He's conserving energy. It's cricket, it's a gentleman's game, and we're looking forward to the 2015 um, Ashes Test Series. It's England taking on Australia. So, uh, mad, mad, fierce rivalry between these two when you talk about cricket. But it's looking like uh, at the Lords, it's all about England. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll find out. The last one, the last um, series between uh, these two uh, teams went to Australia, mm. convincing win for Australia. So, I guess it's time for England to, you know, it's payback time for England this time around. And, We'll see how it pounds out at the end of the day. Particularly when there's a need to tie it, 32 to 31. Exactly. So England will be looking forward to give all they can. Just to also let you know that the Ashes dates back to 1882. There you go. Sports has been in existence ever since. I'm sure Adam played some sports. Now well, let's quickly talk about what's going on. The world of tennis, we're counting down to Wimbledon. Yes. And what's all this talk about Maurice saying? It's all about beating Djokovic. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, you can understand why. Um, these two guys now, they're looking like the ones uh, to lead uh, tennis uh, forward in terms of the rivalry. Um, Rafael Nadal seems to be on the slide. Um, same thing for uh, Roger Federer. But then Djokovic, defending champion, um, disappointing end to his French Open campaign. So um, I guess he's coming into this tournament really um, hoping to defend his title um, successfully. But then Andy Murray is in a great um, vein of form as well too. The one in Queens uh, just uh, last week, and uh, apparently the bookmakers uh, think uh, they believe uh, the two favorites uh, for this tournament is um, um, Novak Djokovic and Anna Murray. Mm. We'll see how it pans out eventually, but what we know for sure now is Anna Murray um, against um, Djokovic has been one sided uh, for the past seven games now. It's all mm. it's been. Djokovic all the way, and the head to head actually is 19 to 8 in favor of Djokovic. Oh, look at that. So it's looking like um, it's not looking very good for uh, Murray mm. at all going through this competition, but we know he is going to give uh, Djokovic a good fight mm. when they eventually meet. That's it. So, and Murray has tagged Novak Djokovic, public enemy number one. He must be the guy, and he has put up the quest to actually beat Novak Djokovic if he wants to win a Grand Slam title. So, quickly, yes. let's talk about some transfer updates. The latest one so far today, Liverpool fans uh, should start celebrating mm. now because uh, they've signed uh, Roberto Firmino, the Brazilian, 23-year-old Brazilian from Offenheim. Mm. That's in the Bundesliga. Very good striker. I hope they won't send him to on loan like they did to Origi. You buy Origi, a good player, yeah, uh, you say go on loan, nah, and then you start struggling. Uh, no, not when you pay £29 million pounds, mm. uh, uh, for a player. So we all know what happened to them last year. They didn't get enough goals in the Premier League, and that's why the season ended up being very disappointing. So this time around, they started working. By the way, that's the fifth signing of the season. It shows you Brendan Rodgers is really trying to, you know, restructure mm. uh, this squad now ahead of the new season. And um, we have other transfers that have been completed. Pepe Reina, Bayern, is back to Napoli now. Mm -hmm. It was a strange move going to Bayern in the first place. No, and going well, to Mad Napoli when, and, uh, when Benitez well, is leaving. Exactly. No, equally well, was going to be playing back up to Manuel Neuer. Now, now he's back in Napoli going to get regular playing time and it's going to be good very good for his career okay so that's it um transfer updates are for you right here on channels television uh, that's it it's a wrap on the show this morning but remember it's not a wrap on social media you can keep talking to us on facebook and on twitter on twitter our channels on the sports sport and on facebook our channels i think sport that's it on behalf of this team the team at the background the entire team our channels television sports center in lagos nigeria my name is austin okonakman action packed world of sports so in everything you do remember Let's keep talking sports. Bye for now.